Hello. You, whoa. Right, microphone's working. So, thanks for turning up to the last session of the day on the Azure Cloud Adoption Framework. So, yeah, really glad you, you made it. So, first of all, thanks. I've got to say thanks to our sponsors. So we've got our, our um, the events main sponsors here, and then we've got some of the smaller sponsors here. Which is there's a little the little guy, which is um, literally the case in, for me. So I am standing up, by the way. So, uh, so yeah, that's me, um, the owner of uh, LA Net. So we do um, cloud adoption um, for. Um, many large and small companies via uh, many partners. So we've been doing this since 2011. Um, nobody's really heard of us because we work as a white label for a lot of partners. So we don't get to work with the customers directly in a lot of cases. So what we're trying to do is just build awareness and uh, try and you know, build up that way. So we are a Microsoft Go, Go partner. Um, as we mentioned, we've got a Surface Go it's real, we've got one. It's not a three because they're not available yet. Um, if you want to enter, we'll do the prize draw at the end of this session. Um, just scan that code or the cup and we'll pick a random person. Anybody need to scan? No, okay, cool. So let's just um, get started. So what I'll do, I'll just show you some, does anybody, is anybody who doesn't know what the, can anybody, can everybody name the five phases of the cloud adoption framework? So is there anybody who can't? All right, fine. So you're probably in the right place then. Fine. So we look at what the CAF is. Uh, why does it exist first? Why do we need it? So the whole point of it was for um, to create a unified guidance on adopting the Microsoft Cloud Platform. So what was happening back when it came out in 2011, uh, we, like, I was one of the first people to start using it, a lot of uh, people. But everybody had their own standards and best practices. People were making their own ways. So every, every partner and every customer was deploying um, to the cloud in slightly different ways. So what Microsoft have done working with their large customers and other partners through feedback have created this thing called the Cloud Adoption Framework, which gives kind of standard unified guidance which is basically just a list of common sense things to do when you're going to the cloud. And recently, they've done something really interesting, put anti-patterns. So they've also put um, what not to do and what happens if you do that. So it's really interesting. I'll I can show you that in the demo piece. So that's um, the point of it. Let me just do a time check. Cool. Right. Um, so how, the, the how, how do we use it? So to use the cloud adoption framework, if we just go to aka.ms forward slash CAF, that will take you to the Cloud Adoption Framework page, and it will look like this. There's also um, the, the WAF, so there's aka.ms slash WAF, which will take you to the well-architected framework, which is slightly different. So the well-architected framework is about um, how to architect your workloads when you, uh, to put them in the cloud, whereas the CLAF, ugh, not the CLAF, the CAF is how to set up your cloud environment in the first place before you put any workloads in it and how to operate it and secure it um, once you have got your workloads in there. Okay. Now, if we look at the top section here, we've got tools and templates. There's a bunch of tools and templates and guidance available in the CAF. Uh, so if you click on that link, and I'll show you there's other ways to get there as well. And if you click on any of the, the links, there's about uh, nine of these boxes further down. I'll show you in the demo. But as soon as you click on one of these links down here, it will take you to the full um, documentation. Now, it's a, it's a bit of a beast. There is a lot of stuff in there, right? So some of the key things just to show you in terms of, of the how. So this gives you a brief overview. And then we've got the what's new. That's a really good section. So they're adding stuff to the framework all the time. So for example, recently, they've added a lot of um, guidance on data analytics, because that's a big thing at the moment. So if you look at the uh, what's new, you'll see all the data analytics guidance, um, architecture diagrams, and the best practice way of building a data analytics platform. Following that, you've got the key five um, stages here. Strategy, plan, ready, adopt, and govern, and manage. So we'll, we'll talk about them in a moment. 
Um, and then you've got the secure section. So there's a lot of guidance and a lot of that's been added recently actually for the secure um, aspects. So how to manage security in the cloud, all um, the best practice guidance there. Organize is how do you um, shape your organization? How do you align the right people, train the right people to get them on board? Um, and there's all, um, you might have heard of the uh, CCOE, Cloud Center of Operational Excellence or something like that. So there's all um, things like that in there, like the racy matrix on who's responsible for what. Then under resources, you've got things like the tools and the templates, which I'll show you. So we, we, we mentioned that last in the last slide here. So under resources, you'll see um, this, sorry, go back one more. You'll see the same things. If you went to that resource link, or if you click there, you'll see the same um, things. Speaking of which, um, one of the tools and templates, so we'll, we'll cover those five phases in a bit, but one of the first phases, one of the templates just looks something like this. So when you're talking about um, a cloud adoption plan, your first part is your strategy, trying to understand why you want to move to the cloud, what are you trying to achieve, um, what are your business objectives, and then you may have financial objectives, you may have um, ob objectives to innovate on a specific cloud-only service. Um, and you can track and um, document all that in here. So you've got your executive summary here. For example, you define your strategy piece. That's the piece that says, okay, why do we want to move to the cloud? And there's, there's guidance on that. So there's, uh, Microsoft have, have written a bunch of, um, they've got tables for motivations, right? So people have, organizations have different motivations to move to the cloud. And there's a list here. So you can just go to that list, all right, this one fits mine. So there's things like, uh, a data center exit, for example, right? So your data center is uh, contracts coming to an end. You need to move to the cloud to save on costs or whatever. So they've got guidance and they even help you which one you want to look at. Um, further down, they've got business outcomes. So what, um, what business outcomes are we expecting to achieve? Do we want to be faster to market than our competitors? Do we want to have increased scale, increased um, um, security, all those kind of things? And then you've got um, stakeholders. Who are your stakeholders? What are they interested in? So you've, you've got all this information before you start your cloud journey. So what a lot of um, customers, maybe and partners as well, um, they'll focus on jumping straight in. Right, we're going to set you some subscriptions up. Now go and deploy your workloads. But they've not clearly documented and defined the strategy and the business outcomes that they're trying to achieve. Um, so at the end of it, they've got nothing to measure against. You see what I mean? So that's one of the templates. Other things that you've got is assessment. So when you first start, you're doing the strategy piece, for example. Um, it's up there. It's hidden. So the first piece is the strategy. And there's a strategy assessment. So it's tr what, it, what it does, it says, OK, questions like this, right? Um, has your company identified a compelling reason, right? So this is all to help you understand why you want to move. And then we've got, OK, do you have executive stakeholder buy-in, right? So it will give you guidance. So you may, have, you may, in your department, think, right, we need to use the cloud. Your executives are not fully on board. And then you, when you fill this thing in at the end, um, I, I think I've got a pre-filled one. I'll show you what it looks like. It gives you lots of guidance on, OK, what do you do in that situation, right? Have you got clearly defined security guardrails and policies? If you say no to those questions, it will take you to the section on the cloud adoption framework, which helps you define those um, um, guardrails. Same with skills. Do you have the right skills? If not, what do you do? Contact a partner or put your people through these specific training programs that Microsoft have got, and they'll give you links and guidance to those um, places to, to tell you exactly what you need to do to get to that right level. OK, so that's the tools and templates. That's just one of the assessments. OK, so here's my view on it. So you've got the top line strategy plan ready, adopt. And then around this part here, you look at govern and manage. So here's your, you've got your baselines. And how do you monitor those baselines? How do you improve those baselines? So you've got um, a baseline for governance. You've got a baseline for management, our standard operating model, for example. How do you monitor that's working? And how do you improve it over time? And um, this is uh, Microsoft's slide here. So um, we talk about each of these a little bit um, as, as we go along. But the key 
I mean, again, all these um, diagrams, apart from my ones, are on, are on the aka.ms forward slash CAF. Um, has anyone not seen this slide before? So you've, you're all familiar with it? Okay, cool. So yeah, this is basically what we were saying. Strategy, plan, ready, adopt here. You'll notice you can go two branches. You could, you could do both at the same time if you wanted to. Um, so the adopt phase is that once we've got the platform ready, that's when we start putting our workloads in, right? And it's really important to get, so this is where you put your workloads in. It's really important to go f through these phases before you start putting your workloads in. Because once you start putting your workloads in, you might find you don't really have the security governance in that you need. You don't have any guardrails in. And it, it's very common, it's very easy to do. We see it a lot. Customers have gone in, started putting workloads in there, and the next thing they know, they've either been, had a security breach or their spend has gone through the roof because there's no guardrails in place to, to, to protect against those kind of things. Okay. Let me know if I'm talking too fast. Am I talking too fast? No? Okay. Right. right. So strategy, understand the business motivations and required outcomes, as we saw. And you can use those templates to help you do that with the links to take you to the right places. Plan. Once you've got your strategy and what your desired business outcomes are, you need to think about, okay, how do we uh, make an actionable plan to achieve those outcomes? So for example, uh, our, our, our strategy is to be cloud first, for example, and you've identified your, the skills within your team are not there. So one of the p action items for the plan on the, on the organizational side would be work with a partner or put your people through these specific training programs to get to that point. So that's just one specific thing that you would have in your action plan, okay? So the how, we'll put it in there. And then ready, so this is the ready phase where we talk about things like the foundations. So now you know what you're trying to achieve, you've got a plan to get there, and now you wanna start building the platform ready to receive your workloads. Um, and we talk about things like landing zones, and those are, it's basically, um, I've, I've got, a, I think I've got one on the next slide, actually. So it's, it's coming up in a little while. So a landing zone is, um, if you just think about um, a foundation, so your foundational as your infrastructure, to, you could say your core networking, such as firewalls, security um, services, guardrails, policies, those kind of things. So you make sure all those things are in place first, so you've got some governance and you've done your role-based access correctly. For example, there's, there's loads of tools and templates and you can be as um, basic or as complex as you want it to be. And then you've got the adopt phase. Now we've got our foundations in place, our landing zone. Now we can start looking at how we're going to migrate those workloads or how we're going to innovate using new um, cloud services, which you may, may not have had on-prem before. So you've got things like, I don't know, Databricks, Synapse, all those kind of um, um, AI, all these things that you can use in the cloud quite quickly, whereas you, you might not have been able to do that so easily when you was on-prem. Okay. Um, and then you've got the govern and manage, which goes around um, the, the, the last uh, four phases. So again, how do you define what your baseline, what's your security baseline, what's your operational baseline? And that's where you um, use this part here and the guidance in the framework to help you define those. There's templates. Um, there's also things inside Microsoft Azure to help you. So there's something, for example, called the uh, Azure Security Benchmark, and that's a set of policies. Um, so it's called an initiative. And that's just one of the items that you can use to apply to your environment. So you can say, we're going to use the Azure uh, security benchmark policies, apply them to our environment, and it gives you a good starting baseline. And there's the simpler ones as well. So there's some really basic ones, and you could start with that, but it gives you some things better than nothing. But you, you, it depends on how much you, uh, time you want to invest and, and make, how secure you want to be. But there's, there's like a, a very quick starting point, right, using CAF blueprints or cloud adoption framework. I've got blueprints as well, which are, again, are a set of um, practices and policies. You can apply that to your environment. It gives you really basic security. But again, it's better than nothing than just jumping in feet first. Does that make sense?
Okay, so here we just talk a little bit about the ready phase. So ready, what we're doing here is preparing the environment. We look at the setup guide. So it's also called the Azure Quick Start Guide. Um, that's concerned with how do we organize our resources, um, how do we do our naming, our role-based access, and networking, and then how do we deploy it. So you deploy your landing zone, as we talked about, and that could be uh, kind of a basic thing or an enterprise-scale landing zone, and then think about how is that going to um, work with future expansion, how are you going to handle that, and also um, an enhanced landing zone. So when we talk about an enhanced landing zone is that we put our own, your, the customer or the partner or whoever, ha can add their own pieces to that landing zone. Microsoft give you tools and templates to build an enterprise scale landing zone, but it is just a starting point. Right? You don't get any advanced automation and, and custom policies and those kind of things in there. And that's where you start thinking about, okay, we need to do a bit more than, than the basics. We've got specific requirements. Uh, we, we want uh, to automate specific things, and that's when you start thinking about an enhanced landing zone. Okay, so this is kind of what an enterprise scale landing zone architecture looks like. Is anybody, is everybody familiar with that? Is anybody not familiar with it? Do you want me to talk about it? Shall I, two minutes, yeah? So what this is saying is, um, you're going to deploy a landing zone. Microsoft provides you the templates, whether the ARM templates or even Terraform, to build a structure, right? And that structure would be would consist of um, management groups and subscriptions, right? So a way to organize your subscriptions is via management groups, and that, those allow you to apply role-based access and security policies um, to a, a, a sensible structure. Now, the sensible structure that they start you off with is things like platform. So all your platform and networking, identity um, services will go here. And landing zone is here. That's where, again, it's a management group. And your work, these are your user workloads, OK? So you've got, you could think of this as your shared infrastructure, user workloads here. And then you've got things like decommission subscriptions, sandbox. OK? And when you think about policies, you need to apply them to the right level. So you can say, okay, we are going to apply policies to my, I, I, I am an NHS organization, for example. I don't want anybody to deploy anything outside of the UK. So I could create a policy and assign it up here, right at the top, and that would filter all the way down to my, every subscription in my organization, and, and I can make sure uh, that nobody can build anything in my environment outside of where I want them to build it. And that's just an example. And again, and the way you would use that, so any, anybody builds anything inside here, that policy will apply, and they won't be able to do anything outside of that. Um, a good, uh, it's a really good way of uh, managing um, your security as well, because um, even if uh, somebody's an owner of a subscription, they still won't be able to deploy outside of the UK, for example. So that's the right way to um, organize your security policies up there. So that's your policies and also your role-based access as well. So you grant access at the right level to the right people, and they can't break it, basically, is what we're trying to say. So, does that make sense? Cool. OK, um, a little about ado adopt here. So that was the ready phase. So we've got our landing zone. We've built it. We've put our security policies in place. We've put our monitoring solutions, our backup solutions, uh, all our custom policies. So for example, when we deploy um, a database, our landing zone deployment make sure it's automatically um, secure. It's automatically got auditing enabled. It's automatically got defender enabled. So the users don't even need to worry about we know our environment is secure. Um, and then, so then you move to the adopt phase. So, okay, now I want to start putting workloads in it. So you start your migration scenario. So you start then looking about the best practice. What tools am I going to use to mig migrate my workloads or innovate? So what, um, how are we going to deploy new cloud-only services into our environment? And because we've done our landing zone correctly, we've put our policies in place, nobody's going to go into our environment and start spinning up things we don't want them to spin up. Because by default, um, the platform will let you spin up whatever you want, wherever you want, if you don't put any controls in. Right? So somebody can go in and spin up the, the, the largest um, server possible in whatever country they want. Just leave it, forget about it. You, and the next thing you know, you've got a massive bill for that. So we get called sometimes when it's too late. So 
from customers that we haven't set it up for. Um, so it's to protect against those kind of things, really. And also, like if, if you deploy, as I mentioned, a database, you can make sure it's already uh, backed up, it's audited, every, everything's enabled. A, a VM, for example, um, it's already um, backed up for you by the, by the landing zone, by the policies in there, so you, and it's already monitored. So you don't have to do it for each single item as you put it in or, or forget to do it. So. So again, ma manage and govern. You start right at the beginning. You, you do those assessment tools as uh, we talked about. Um, and then we, we go through. It, it's an iterative process. So you first you define your baseline. And then you look at how do we monitor that baseline and how do we improve it over time. So you need to have a starting point at least. And then um, continue, uh, continuous um, monitoring and improvement of those things. So, oh, it's time for a, a demo. So, we excited? No? Okay, good. I am. So, well, let's show you how, how do we use it then. So, let's come out of here. If I go to aka.ms forward slash calf, that will take you straight to, if I'm, connect, I'm connected, good. I'll take you to the Cloud Adoption Framework homepage, as we mentioned. Now, again, if you go to WAF, it'll take you to the well-architected framework. That's a story for another day, but that's also really useful. Okay, so as we mentioned, if we scroll down here, tools and templates. Um, let's let's have a quick look at those. I think we've got a bit of time. So for each phase, there's different tools and templates that they can use. So one of those, as we talked about, was the assessment one. Okay, so let's assess where you are today and what kind of guidance you're going to need. If I click on that, it will take you to the readiness assessment. And this is where it starts asking you. So if you log in and save it, so if you're doing it for a customer or for you know, a department or whatever, you can, you can save it and come back to it with your Microsoft login. Uh, if I do start... And here's where all the questions are. So there's like 17 questions on here. So we're not going to have time to go through them. I did bake one earlier, so I don't know if it's come out of the oven yet. Let me just... Uh, no, I don't see it. Oh, I might have to come back to that. Or I'll just check, check with me afterwards. I'll show you. Um, so, so, so that's the tools and templates. And again, if you, if you go back to the home page, to the CAF, so you can always find your way home to here. And then let's, let's just click on any of these links down here, as we mentioned. So you'll see all these boxes here for each phase. So if I go to get started here, um, and you'll see all the different phases here. Uh, if I close the the uh, journey examples here, you'll see guidance for each of those phases. So, for example, if you were doing the strategy um, assessment and you had some gaps around um, skills or whatever, it will take you to the right place in this. It'll, it'll provide you with a score and right, go and have a look at this part of the framework, for example. I don't know, let's have a look at plan. Uh, where's it gone? skills readiness, right? So it'll take you into here, right? Build a readiness plan. It'll tell you how to map um, the roles, which, which roles you're going to need, what skills they're going to need, where the training is. So there's loads of training on MS Learn. There's also a course just on the cloud adoption framework itself. Um, so, uh, so basically here, um, th there's also, you know, how to identify those gaps as well. What gaps, what skills do you, are your team going to need? So you can use that guidance in here. Um, I did quickly mention something about anti-patterns. So each one of these has now got something called anti-patterns, which I think is brilliant. So just, just know that that exists and it's there. Take a look. It's quite funny. Some of them are quite funny. So, you know, it'll say, right, if you, if you forget to do this, if you don't do it properly, this is what's going to happen. And then you can show your customers and say, right, you didn't listen, so here it is. So it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty good. Um, I'm conscious of time. So... So that's um, the assessment. So that was just one of the assessments we had a quick look at. We had a look at the, the template. I have downloaded 
the cloud adoption plan. So you'd use this in the first two phases. And again, this is the bit that most people leave out. So here, you'd use, you, you can just make it your own and fill it in. So uh, in here, executive summary. Yeah. We want to build a data analytics solution for better customer insights. We want to migrate a specific application by the end of December. And here's where you can track all that stuff. So what's the strategy? Um, who are the stakeholders? Who, who's, I mean, what's important to these people? What are their KPIs? And once you've tracked that, that's where you can use it at the end to measure it. Um, and then again, we, we can um, track all kinds of things in here, right? Business justification, as well as um, once we do this, we start looking at somewhere in there about what workloads we're going to use, what is our security baseline, and again, there's guidance to help you what the, um, define that security baseline, and you've all got that written down, so when you get to the end, what, slow down. Right, okay. okay right, I've got, to, I've, yeah, I've got to finish up. So I think, I think that's it in terms of the demo. I know it's really quick, because these things, are, I've done like a 10-hour course on this, so to do it in 20 minutes is, is, is quite a challenge. So um, I hope that gives you some idea of what it is, how to use it, where it is, and why it exists. Um, th there's some really, really good stuff in there. But I think a key takeaway, if, if there was one, is just remember that URL, aka.ms forward slash CAF, and also remember it's quite important to, to do that strategy and planning before just jumping in and start putting workloads in is, is, uh, would be my key message. Make sure you've got some, at least some security baselines and, and some um, governance in there before you start putting your workloads in because when you don't, it goes wrong and, uh, and it gets expensive. So um, thank you very much. Is there any questions on any of that before we do the draw? Oh, ask me afterwards if you want. I'm going to be around. I'll be having a beer downstairs as well. Um, so we'll do the draw then. Is that all right? So I, I don't want to put the names on the screen for data protection and all that it's these days. So if I could have a volunteer. Is anyone here not, not um, entered the draw? Are you, sir, do you mind? I just need you to just make sure I'm not doing anything. Yeah, I just... Without, I don't want to reveal all the names. I just want to make sure. So we've got a list, right? It's not a long list. So what I'm going to do, so here's, here's the uh, list of everybody that's entered. Okay, yeah. yeah, I'm going to export that list. So we've got, I don't know, however many. I'll do an e export in Excel. Open that. Nothing up my I know. <laughs> right, so what we'll do, so how many? Okay, now we'll get somebody to pick it. I'll let you pick the person. Pick somebody to pick a number between 1 and 44. 44. 23, so we're going to go to 23 in this list. So what we're going to do, because... Not everyone's going to be here. We're going to pick five names, right? And if, some, if that person's here, then great, they, they take it home. If not, we'll, we'll just pick the sixth person and email them and wish them well. So number 23 is Craig McGough. Craig McGough. Craig McGough, you do not win a Surface Go, unfortunately. Do you want to give us another? What was, what was your name? Right. 32. Uh, Siren? Simon. Do we have a Simon Pepit? We do not. Unfortunately. That's good because I know him actually, so that would look dodgy. Another number? Interesting. Last one. Yeah. Nick Woodley. Awesome, we have a winner. Well done, Nick. Do you want to come up and come up and have a picture? Let's. Uh, thank, thank you, thank you for that. Brilliant. Thank you. Do you want to get?
care picture will put represent the price. Well done. <laughs> I thought all the people yeah. coming in last would be important. Well, well, yeah. Thanks, everybody. And uh, if there's any questions or anything, Thanks. just uh, find us, drop us an email, whatever. I do have a question. Sorry? Yeah. 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 Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I can tell everybody. <laughs>